everyone, Tim here from QBKing77.com here to do a video showing you how to route your Nexus S and Nexus S 4G. This is the latest method on any build. Does not matter, it works on any variant of the Nexus S. I do wanna make a quick note that everything is gonna be wiped just like it was out of the box. Your internal storage is gonna be wiped, so your pictures, your videos, your music, everything's gonna be wiped. Same with your data. Uh, your apps, contacts, etc. is all gonna be wiped. So just kinda keep that in mind, make sure you back everything up to your computer, get everything backed up just to make sure that you don't lose any data that you need. So now that that being said, the first step you need to do is go ahead and go into settings, scroll all the way down, go to developer options, turn them on, hit okay, and then check where it says USB debugging and hit okay. So make sure that is checked. Once it is, you can back out of it and we are ready to go. So you can go ahead and click on the link in the description of the video below. Clicking on the link in the description is gonna take you to this website, wugfresh.com. Big shout out to Wugfresh for putting this toolkit together. Um, always a, a pleasure working with his toolkit just because I've used it with the Nexus 4 and Nexus 10 and it works great. So what you're gonna wanna do is click on this link right here and it will take you to this uh, post right here. Go ahead and scroll all the way down and you will see a download link right here. Click on this download link and download it. It will be an EXE file. Once downloaded, we can go ahead and go into our downloads folder and you will see a file called NRT 1.6, 1.1, or if it's updated a different version right there. What you can do is double click on this application and hit run. And then go ahead and just hit install. Make a note that it does install to program files, x86, WUG fresh development, and go ahead and hit install. Go ahead and allow it user account control, and it will extract all the necessary files into that specific folder and uh, install the toolkit on your PC. So I'm gonna let it install, and then I will be back. All right, so it says cleaning up the files, and then it looks like it opens up the application itself. So here we go, and it says, um, make sure if you don't know your specific model, make sure you go to settings about phone and then you will know. To select the device you have, you'll see there's a bunch of variant, various Nexus S options right here. Make sure you select the appropriate one. I have a Nexus S 4G, so I'm going to select that. And then it says select the Android build you are currently running. So now I'm going, I am actually on stock Android 4.1.1 Jelly Bean. So I'm going to select that and hit apply. Um, again, it will be different depending on what variant of the Nexus S you have and what uh, operating system you are running and what version you're on. So make sure you select the appropriate one, otherwise the toolkit might not work. Keep that in mind. And before you start anything, I want to make a quick note. Um, I want you to install the drivers first on your PC, so go to full driver installation guide right up here. Click on that. And then what I want you to do is just go ahead and skip to step two and then click on this PDA Net Drivers button. Once you click on it, uh, you can hit OK. And then I actually already have PDA Net on my PC, so I don't need to install it. But go ahead and let it install. And this gives you images of what you need to do to install PDA Net. So there's a visual guide courtesy of Wugfresh. So there you have it there. I just kind of wanted to point that out. Make sure you have PDA Net installed on your PC. Again, I already do, so I'm not going to install it. But uh, make sure you install that. Um, that would be to set up drivers on your PC. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. First of all, we need to unlock the bootloader. This first part is exactly what is gonna wipe everything. Once you've unlocked the bootloader, nothing else will get wiped. So go ahead and grab your Nexus S 4G and plug it in to your PC. So just plug it on in. You should see, should see USB debugging up at the top. We're ready to go once we have it plugged in. We need to unlock our bootloader first. So go ahead and click unlock. Um, it's letting you know it's completely wiping your device. And hit OK. It's gonna check ADB status and then it should reboot us into the bootloader of our Nexus S. So it says rebooting your device into bootloader mode right here. And then all it's gonna do is type a command prompt in. It'll just say fastboot OEM will unlock, which you could do manually, but this toolkit does everything for you automatically, which is fantastic. So now it's gonna check fastboot status, lets you know device is connected. All right, and then you will see this screen come up, this unlock bootloader screen. You navigate uh, with the volume up and down buttons right here, so you'll see yes and no. Uh, you wanna highlight yes, and then you press the power button to select it. This is what's gonna unlock your bootloader. Go ahead and press the power button, and then it will uh, automatically reboot, I believe. So it says rebooting your device. You'll see a padlock down there that is unlocked, letting you know that your bootloader has now been unlocked 
and that should be just about it. Again, it's going to do a factory reset, so this boot up will take a bit of time. Uh, I'll be back once it's done. It'll, it'll actually take you to the startup screen where you have to set up all that stuff. You can go ahead and set it up if you want because no more data will be wiped. Uh, but anyways, I will be back. All right, so I'm back. Uh, the device did go to that startup screen. I just skipped everything, but now you can actually unplug your device real quick. Go ahead and go into settings, scroll all the way down, and go to developer options, and then turn USB debugging on once more. Let's go ahead and turn that on, check USB debugging, hit OK, and make sure that is on again. So, and then go ahead and plug your device back into your PC. So once USB debugging is connected, once again, we're ready to root our device. So you'll see down here there's a box for rooting. If you'd like to add a custom recovery to Flash, go ahead and check this box right here. Um, you would want to install a custom recovery if you're looking to flash any kind of ROMs or modifications through this recovery. So there you have it there. You can just press the root button. If you don't want to, then you can just go ahead and leave custom recovery unchecked. This is going to install twerp recovery if you have this uh, custom recovery box checked. Otherwise, it won't need to download this twerp recovery, but I believe it will need to download some files. So what it's going to do is go ahead and automatically download all the necessary files for us. It's great that it does it when we need them because the toolkit would be huge if it had the necessary files already. So fantastic that it uh, already includes this. Again, it's gonna download Super SU Zip as well. Press OK to continue. Now it's running through the download of that. I believe everyone should have to download that. Don't hold me to that though. It says match and then it's gonna download a modified boot image. I don't think this should take very long either. And OK, so that is done installing. And then it looks like once these files are done, that should be it. So here it is, letting you know exactly what it's going to do. You need to make sure your bootloader is unlocked. We just did that. Um, so that's just about it. We got, If you're ready to continue, go ahead and press OK. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to check ADB status. I'm sure it's going to throw us into the bootloader once more. It says rebooting your device into bootloader mode. Like so, it is. So now what it's going to do is it should... It depends. Uh, if you didn't check that custom recovery box, it shouldn't take as long as this is going to take because this is going to need to flash a custom recovery as opposed to just rooting the phone. So um, this will go ahead and install the custom recovery and then root your device as well. Otherwise, if you didn't check that box, it'll just root your phone. So it looks like it is uh, rebooting our device back up. And then I think once it boots back up, it's going to go back into the bootloader, etc. So we will see. Okay, it says pushing root files to your device, so it looks like it's rooting the phone. Now it says rebooting your device into bootloader mode. All right, so now it's flashing a custom recovery. Again, if you didn't check that box, it will not run through this process, but I did. So it is uh, gonna boot twerp temporarily. So I think it should boot up twerp recovery, which is a touch screen, touch screen recovery, excuse me. So there we go, it did boot up twerp uh, recovery. It says rooting, so we are gonna see what uh, what that does, not exactly sure what it's doing now, but uh, we will see. So it says rooting, and then we will take a look and see what happens after this is done. Okay, so it says waiting for your device to finish booting back up. I believe we might have to manually reboot our device. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit reboot system in twerp recovery, so you can go ahead and do that yourself. Um, it says waiting for it to finish booting back up, so I'm gonna let it boot up and I'll be right back. Okay, so it says automated rooting procedure complete. Uh, we are gonna double check that and make sure we have super SU in our app drawer. Again, hopefully this did flash properly. I don't know why it didn't reboot once we were on twerp. If it does not, no big deal because if you install the custom recovery, it's very easy to just flash a zip file and root. So we will see. Anyways, go ahead and go into our app drawer and we will see if Super SU is there. If not, no big deal. There'll just be another extra step to take after we are done with this. And it doesn't look like Super SU is there. Not a big deal at all. So hopefully if you just selected root and don't have a custom recovery, you do have root access. If you do not, leave a comment um, and I will pass it along to Wugfresh if for any reason this isn't rooting the device. But if you install the custom recovery, all you're gonna have to do is click on the next link in the description of the video, and there will be a super SU zip download. Uh, go ahead and mount your phone to your PC. So go ahead and connect it to your PC, turn on USB storage, and then transfer the zip file that you download over to your device. The download link for that zip file will be right here. I'll link to it in the description, as I said, a download link, and then go ahead and transfer it onto the internal storage of your Nexus S. 
So here it is right here, just on the root of it. Just transfer it, transfer it over to removable disc F. And once you've transferred it over, go ahead and eject your removable disc and you can unplug your Nexus S4G actually. So we're done with our PC. We should be done, especially if you just rooted the device and did not install a custom recovery. If you uh, didn't install a custom recovery, go ahead and go into the Super SU application, make sure you update binaries, etc. Um, you can actually watch the uh, after this process, I will do that. So if you just rooted, go ahead and you can skip through this installing through custom recovery process and wait for me to boot back up and then you can check it out there. But anyways, let's go to our phone. Okay, so to get into our custom recovery, go ahead and power off our device. We will need to get into that bootloader and I will show you how to manually do so. So if you did install a custom recovery and you wanna flash around, this will show you how to manually get into your custom recovery. So press and hold volume up and power button at the same time. Keep them both held down and this will take you into the bootloader like so. Now press volume down twice until it highlights recovery in green right there. Then go ahead and press the power button to select it. And then it should reboot us into our Torp recovery. Again, you have that unlocked padlock there. I will make a video showing you how to get back to stock. So here's Team Win Recovery. And it should load on up right here. Now all we have to do is go ahead and go to install. And then scroll down and you'll see CWM Super SU Zip. Go ahead and select that zip file and then hit swipe to confirm flash. So go ahead and swipe to confirm and there we go. And it uh, shouldn't take long. Now just hit reboot system and that's it. So now we should be fully rooted and that would be it. Uh, again, very easy, just an extra step needed, no big deal. I'll talk to Wugfresh about it. You might not even have to do that this step once this video is uploaded if he updates the toolkit. So just kind of keep that in mind. But uh, after this boots up, I'll show you what to do once you have the Super SU application. Okay, and once our phone has booted up, go ahead and go into the app drawer. Again, if you just rooted and didn't install a custom recovery, you should probably do this as well. You'll see a Super SU application in your app drawer. Go ahead and select it. And it says no apps configured. I'm not connected to any Wi-Fi network. So if it says binaries need to be updated, go ahead and update them. But other than that, you should be fully rooted. If anything needs super user permissions, that should be it. I can actually test that right now. Okay, also I wanted to make a quick note. You might want to install an application called BusyBox. Some root applications need it. So again, go ahead and search in the Play Store for BusyBox and then hit install and hit accept and download. So make sure you install the BusyBox application. Once it's done downloading, I'll actually uh, show you guys what you need to do once we go into it, just because um, this will need root access. So again, this will prove that we're rooted and then also install BusyBox on our device. Again, some root applications do need it installed. All right, so BusyBox is done installing. Go ahead and go into the application itself and let it load on up. I think it might ask for super user permissions right away. So if it does, we are going to need to grant them. So there it is, super user request. Go ahead and grant it permissions. That lets us know we have full root access. So there you have it. Again, if you didn't install custom recovery and can't flash that zip file, then uh, leave a comment and let me know, or otherwise you can just install custom recovery and get root access. Uh, but let's go ahead and exit out of it. Uh, I don't know why I just exit out, why I just closed out of it, but let's go back into BusyBox. And here's what we're going to need to do. Um, this lets us know new features and now what we need to do is go ahead and select the install button So go ahead and press install. This is going to take a bit of time So just be patient with this BusyBox installation process It's going to check the system everything and then it will install BusyBox. It might take upwards Maybe around two minutes if I had to guess so a bit of time uh, So let it install and it looks like installation was successful I guess it didn't take nearly as long as I thought it would it kind of depends on the device I guess previously when I installed it it took a little bit longer on a different phone but uh, there you have it so BusyBox is installed we have uh, super user at super SU access I guess and that's it so our Nexus S4G or your Nexus S should be fully rooted now if you have any questions feel free to ask leave a comment leave a comment let me know how it goes even if it works for you please uh, drop a comment let me know this video was helpful. Be sure to subscribe to me as well. I'll have other uh, Nexus S4G videos up. Uh, so click that subscribe button. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. All links will be in the description of the video below. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up.